welcome to my ukulele friends. I'm so excited for today's lesson because I'm sure afterwards you'll not only impress others but yourself. I'm going to help you sound amazing, get creative and feel relaxed while using your ukulele. The exercises throughout this video will gradually get more difficult. So whether you're an absolute beginner or you've been strumming for a while, this lesson's for you. If at any stage it gets a little tricky, pause, practice and return to this lesson when you're ready. In last week's lesson, we learned about 4-4 timing and picking patterns for relaxation. This week we're learning about 6-8 finger picking patterns. 6-8 is basically where we count in groups of 6. 1-2-3-4-5-6 time signature can be heard in songs like Hallelujah and Say Something. This is possibly my favourite time signature for finger picking for relaxation. It's just something about it, it evokes a certain feeling which I can't really explain. I feel like you just need to learn and let me know how you feel when you play these patterns. In finger picking it's really really good if you can start by using your first four fingers for your picking hand to gain independence so that it's easier to play later on. So we have our thumb, first, second and third fingers. I go through the basics of finger picking in one of my earlier videos. I'll attach the link here and in the description below. For this exercise, I'm going to hold C. So we're playing our thumb on our G string closest to our nose, our first finger on C, our second finger on E, and our third finger on A. We're going to begin by playing from our nose to our toes, counting out loud to six. We only have four strings, however, so our beats five and six will be silent. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, six. Five, six. Once you have the hang of that, we're going to move back up with our second and first finger on our E and C strings. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you're an absolute beginner, you can just sit here and play this for ages. You can even mute your strings and continue to practice just to get that finger independence. You actually don't even need your ukulele. You can just practice one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or better yet, name your fingers. Thumb first, second, third, second, first. Thumb first, second, third, second, first. Another exercise you can do is name your fingers randomly. So you might say, third finger, thumb, second finger, first, thumb and third. <laughs> Have a family member test you. Now you don't need to be able to play fast yet. It's more about accuracy. So as long as you feel like you can move on each string at a steady pace, you're ready to move forward. Once you're comfortable with moving up and down the strings, you could also try the exact same pattern, but flip it. Start at your toes, move to your nose and back. From here, it's time to get creative. So write your very own four lines for your tab. And you can also download this at my patreon.com slash you and Bree page and have a go at putting a zero from left to right on each string in the order you want to pick. Just choose any strings, six in a row. Here's an example. Let's hear that while changing chords. changing chords it's time to teach you. So in our last session we learned six chords shown here. If you're not sure how to play them already I do recommend going back and seeing my last lesson. Today we'll use these chords in conjunction with four new chords. I'm going to be teaching you how to play G, G7, E minor and C minor so that you have more creative freedom in your playing. If you already know how to play these chords use the timestamps in the description below to go on to the next section. First we have G. To play G, we use our first finger on our second fret of our C string, second closest to our nose. We use our second finger on our second fret of our A string, closest to our toes. And our third finger on the third fret of our E string, second closest to our toes. 
you'll notice how my hand is out on the diagonal. If it's too straight down, it's a little hard to fit everything. So on that angle can really help. G7 is basically the reverse. We still have this triangle shape, except it's facing the other way. We have our first finger on a first fret of our E string, second closest to our toes. Our second finger on the second fret of our C string, second closest to our nose. And our third finger on the second fret of our A string, closest to our toes. G7. We have E minor. To play E minor, we have our first finger on the second fret of our A string closest to our toes, and then we go up diagonally. So across and up, we have our second finger on the third fret of our E string, and our third finger on the fourth fret of our C string. We then have C minor. We have our third finger in C position, just like we'd regularly play C. Then our next finger goes directly above, and our first finger directly above that again. So similar to D if you've learnt D, but all in the third fret on the three strings closest to our toes. If you're still learning these chords, here's a few quick tips. Practice G to C. The reason? Third finger only has to move down to the fret directly below to where it's already placed. Practice F to G7. That's because your first finger can actually stay in place, act as a pivot, when it moves from F, your second finger simply goes down a fret and this third finger is already hovering to go in place. E minor to C minor. C minor is actually quite nice to change to from E minor. As your second finger stays in place and can just act as a pivot to move between the two. So we still have some extensions to go, but you know a simple 6-8 pattern, how to get creative with it, and you have a whole collection of chords that fit beautifully together so that you're ready to make your own music and take the next step in your learning. From here, we're going to practice changing chords on every count of one. I'm going to use the chord progression G, G7, C, C minor, using the picking pattern from our nose to our toes and back again, like we've already done. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, choose any combination of chords, even start with just two chords changing back and forward. For example, C and C major 7 is beautiful. This picking pattern is actually really beautiful also to use in the song Hallelujah. Have a try. Not sure how to read tab? Check out one of my earlier videos here. Our next goal is using two strings at once. I'm going to hold E minor for this one. We're going to be picking out two outer strings for the beat one and the beat four. So we'll do the exact same pattern, nose to toes and back, except instead of just our outside strings, we'll play them together. One, two, three, four, five, six. So together, two, three, together, five, six. Just like we've already learnt with picking patterns, you could do this in any order you want. So once again, write down your four lines and have a go at writing your own pattern. To write two notes at the same time, you just simply stack them one on top of the other. Some picking patterns will sound nicer than others, so just keep experimenting and see what feels really good for you. If you come up with something you love, I'd love if you take a photo of your tab, or even better, a video, and tag me on Instagram at you and Bree Music Tutorials. Our next goal is to strum and pick. This is where it gets really exciting. So to be consistent, let's strum on the one and the three, just like we did with our double strings pattern, holding G. I'm going to strum, two, three, strum, five, six, strum, two, three, strum, five, six. strums on your off beats 
If you're not sure what an offbeat is, I do suggest checking out my series on strumming patterns. I think it will really help. I'll add it here and in the description below. Here's an example, and again, for consistency, I'm going to play G, G7, C, C minor. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 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 you can put everything we learnt together and get a little bit creative. Use variations of picking single strings, double strings and strumming and you can even change it for every chord you play. bonus material for this lesson over at patreon.com slash you and Brie. I create these videos from my deep love and intense passion for teaching to help you and everyone I can on their ukulele journeys. At the time of filming this, I'm so excited that I'm on 923 subscribers. My goal when starting this was 1000 subscribers, so I'm so close. I can't believe I'm actually nearly there. So if you could help support me by clicking subscribe and like, sharing with your friends, and commenting below, it will really help for this channel to grow. The fact you're here at the end of this lesson means that you've already showed me great support. So I'm so grateful and I have so much love for you already. So thank you for supporting me along this journey and I hope I've supported you as well. I'd love to hear from you, so don't forget to comment below. Check out my next lessons here and here and subscribe here.